What up guys, it's your boy Jose and this video is about being a boss in your clinical rotation by being a boss taking your vital sign. <laughs> So when it comes to the vital signs, just know that there's four objective things and one subjective thing. Objective things, objective is basically what you see as a nurse or a nursing student, and subjective is what the patient says, what the client says. For objective ones is temperature, pulse, respiration, blood pressure. The subjective thing is pain. What I usually do is make an assessment on pain first. So basically what I do is knock, knock, knock. Hey, how are you? Good. Okay, my name is Jose. I'm assigned to you. I have to take your vital sign. That right? But this, I'm going to do you for the pain 0 to 10 0 from nothing pain as in it hurts really 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 bad that right after that boom and of course if the person says yes i do have a pain and stuff like that it's like you know i have a headache or my arm or my leg i believe where is it is it radiating is it moving or whatever this and that blah temperature when it comes to the temperature there's no in the long term place you're most likely going to be using a pro it could be a long little thing it looks like a thermometer the old school thermometer but it's for it's made of plastic and there's a wire that connects so machine right? it's a little handle thing depends where you're at sometimes the little handle thing where you hold it or sometimes it's just in the stand one thing that you need to know is the probe the color of the probe please pay attention to the color of the probe and the probe is blue that means you're good to go you can put it on the tongue on the armpit if it's a red probe don't do it my friend why because that probe goes into people's butthole into the rectum and the boob that booty no where the poop comes out no no just say no red probe mm -mm, don't do it blue probe cool let's go now the probe here's one thing um the probe has a protection thingy it's a you know it's just it's a sleeve imagine it's a protection basically a probe like a condom for it protect people from infection spreading out because ain't nobody's trying to get sick nowadays and the way it turns on a lot of places is just automatic you take the probe which is a piece of metal or plastic or whatever you take that thing there's a box sleeve push in push in it clicks the machine turns on you take the thing under the tongue middle tell them don't bite on it just put it under the tongue Relax. See, you got the temperature. That's one. Take the thing. There's that button, which is blue. It should be blue. Take that thing. Aim at the garbage. Press the button, and it comes out. And another place is an armpit. Armpit. Be at the temperature. Here's one thing to put in mind. If the patient drank coffee, chewing a gum, or whatever, just ate, chewing gum, smoked a cigarette, wait 15 minutes. Don't do it. When it comes down to under the tongue, stuff like that, right? If the patient, you know that patient's at risk for seizures. Like, I mean, like, risk for seizures? No. Under the tongue. No bueno. Why? Because they're gonna bite on it. Armpit. Patient has like fungus on the armpit. Don't do it. If the patient is diaphoresis or uh, sweating, take the tissue, dry it up. Boom. Done. Right? After that, oh, oh. In other places too, they have the tympanic. The tympanic is basically like a thingy, like a little handle. The probe, instead of like a stick, it's like a little dome thing, a cone. A, a cone. Of course, you're gonna have protection on it. The box with that. Yeah. Put it in the ear. Now, the thing when you're putting in the ear is for the adults, you're gonna pull up back. Point to eardrum, beep, got the temperature. Put infant down, back, aim, beep, got the temperature, and you're good to go. Aside from that, too, there's the rectum. There's no direct it's gonna be the probe, the long one. Red, red, it has to be a red probe one. Take the thing, put it in the seat, boom, lube, lube it on the sideline position, red, boom. Pay attention to the patient because why you could trigger off by stimulating the vagus. Is this vagus or oh, whatever? It's just like under there. You don't want to do it. Be pull out, good to go. Boom. Of course, if there's too much loop and you know it's messy, you have to clean up. Clean that up. When you're doing with the rectum, of course you can have gloves. For the eardrums, for the under the tongue, um, armpit if the armpit is sweaty, no gloves if there's skin breakdown. You're not supposed to be taking virus on there if there's skin breakdown. But, you know, if you're wiping down, put gloves on, wash your hands. And of course, too, before you take your body signs, you wash your hands. Forgot to mention that. Um, so that is temperature. Kind of indication again for the mouth. Vomiting, uh, seizure rest. Ear, impact, ear, too much wax. Other than that, ear infection. Armpit, breakdown. If there's a skin breakdown, don't take temperature there. If there is a uh, fungus or whatever, don't, don't take it there. For the right thumb, right thumb. Commonly, it's not really advisable to do for, well, it's not available to do for cardio patients. That's on hypertensive medication. So you don't do that one like boo boo. Um, aside from that too, diarrhea, common sense, don't do not do it there. So that's temperature. Now we're moving into the pulse. When it comes to the pulse, what you're gonna do is thumb area, two fingers, feel the pulse. Usually there's like a bone 
here, press down on it, you're gonna feel the pose. Now, some people do like this, I do this, do the two finger, my finger is a little bit too sensitive, like yo, am I feeling my pulse or am I feeling the patient? So, these two, I'm good to go, and I feel it, because this hand is really sensitive. For me, feel it, now, I keep it there, and that's called a radio, keep it there, and I'll wait for 30 minutes. Now, one thing too, if it's, you're gonna pay attention, is it bounding? Is it like, like really pounding, really hard, bounding, that's bounding. Is it thready where I touch it and it disappears? Or is it weak where I feel it but it's really weak? You're also gonna pay attention, that's the quality. You're gonna pay attention to the rhythm. The rhythm is, you know, um, is it, does it have a pattern? Straight, or a pause, or whatever. Is it all messed up all over the place? This rhythmia is basically, there's a pattern but it's not normal. A rhythmia, there's just no pattern, it's just literally all over the place. Now you're gonna do that and you're gonna count. You're gonna look at your watch. You're gonna look at it, pay attention to it, you're gonna start at one. So you look at one, kind of one, one, like that, right? I don't look at my watch, I look away. I look on the floor, I look somewhere else, I look at the patient face and stuff like that, right? I'm literally counting in my head just based on what I'm feeling, not on the clock. Because you count based on the clock, you're gonna get 60. Why do you have 60? Because you're counting the clock and there's 60 seconds in one minute and that's wrong. So basically you go like that, count, da -da -da -da. if it's normal, it's a normal rhythm, if it, you're good to go, stop at 30, multiply that by 2, and that is your uh, pulse. If it's dysrhythmia, or is it arrhythmic, you count once, like a full 60 seconds, a full 1 minute. When you're coming to respiration, you're not gonna tell the person, okay, I'm not gonna, look, I'm going to start looking at your respiration now, right? Don't do that because when you do that, people have a tendency of changing the breathing pattern. So literally you trick them. So you, you pretend that you're taking the pulse, but you don't move, move. After you do the whole 60 second one, you don't remove it, you just stay there. You stay there. And you start looking at the chest rise. When the chest rising, a uh, breath sound, a breath is literally like in and out. An inhale and an exhale. So that's one. Next one. That's two, and you keep on doing that for a full one minute, and that's your respiration. Then when it comes down to blood pressure, this is where people usually mess up on, and it kind of bothers me too when I see people doing the blood pressure wrong, because they're doing it wrong, and they shouldn't be doing that way because it's wrong. They put the cuff, they put the stethoscope, and they pump to whatever number that they think is correct. That is wrong. What you do is you get the baseline, and the way you do it is you put the cuff on, Feel on the radio, you feel it, and you feel it, you inflate. When you're inflating, you're looking at the gauge, and you're looking at the gauge until you stop feeling the pulse. Whatever your pulse, you, wherever you stop feeling the pulse, what you're gonna do is, you are saying, I'm pumping it, the pulse stops at 140. I'm going to add 30 mmHg to it. So basically, 140, I'm gonna add 30 to it, so it's gonna be like 170. My baseline is 140. I'm gonna add 30 to it, 170. So basically, I'm going to inflate to 170. But before I even inflate, what I'm gonna do is pull, deinflate, um, deflate it, um, bring back circulation, a lot. Just go. You're gonna feel for the brachial, and the way you feel for the brachial is over here. There's a pulse here. You're gonna feel that. Feel the pulse. You're not really gonna feel that strong, but it's there. All right, and that's the, that's where you're gonna put your stethoscope back. Not here. Not here. Just here. Not the phallic. Not the medial. Over here. That right. Boom. That's the brachial. So when you do that one, um, after you do that, stethoscope. Aim it there. Cough. When you have a stethoscope, your piece should be pointing towards the note. That's the correct way of doing it. Listen. Boom. Bam. You're gonna start pumping it. You're gonna pump to 170. When you pump it to 170, you're gonna deflate it. When you're deflating, it shouldn't be too fast. It shouldn't be too slow. When you're inflating it, don't close it completely because you're gonna have a crazy time deflating it. It'll just be really bad. So you're gonna deflate it. You're gonna lose the thing. The first sound that you hear is considered to be the systolic. The last thing that you hear is the diastolic, and that's how you get the blood pressure. And the way you document it is the first thing you hear is the one gonna be on top. The diastolic is the one that's going to be in the bottom. The top number will always be higher than your lower number it's common sense and then mmhg and that's a vital sign when you're documenting things go into details with it as you're going with, with the temperature you're gonna you know dash the temperature and then you're gonna put the location where it's at oh like left and panic i mean right and panic left and panic stuff like that right axillary left axillary right axillary right though just one boo boo so just put an r or a o that when it comes down to post, you're gonna, you know, the post key, and then you're going to dash 
put the number and you're gonna put EP up. You're gonna put the location, left or right arm. Come down to respiration, R. You know, you're gonna put the number and you're gonna put RP up, respiration per minute. For blood pressure, you're gonna put BP and you're gonna put the thing. The first number on top, second number in the bottom, systolic, diastolic, MMHG, that's it. And that's your vital sign, not G. That's your vital sign. That's how you take a vital sign like a bow. And of course, you're gonna put pain, so I forgot to mention that. You're gonna pain, zero, like one from zero to ten. Pain, patient verbalize, zero, no pain, or whatever. That's how you take a vital sign. And this video is 18 minutes, so I'm going to be doing some crazy editing. So, again, thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Tomorrow I have clinicals. It is 2.30 in the morning. And I am awake because before I dropped off my classmate, I had coffee in the car. And I was like, what a waste. And I just drank it all up. And I am regretting it because now I am wide awake. So I'm going to edit this, upload it, and you, my friends, are able to watch it. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, I will be happy.